Hey guys, so I'm gonna talk to you about an argument I hear all the time and something that's very often said to sex trade survivors, which is why don't women just quit prostitution and just go and do a different job or a normal job? Often it's framed as, you know, maybe prostitution is harmful, but women should just stop making unwise economic decisions and then problem solved. So what should you consider before saying this? Well, first of all, a lot of women who are in the sex trade have a day job, or what you might call a day job, though prostitution absolutely happens during the day also, not just at night. A lot of them do have other jobs. They might work at an office. They might work in retail. They might work at a restaurant. They might be an artist. And prostitution is the support income, is the extra income they need because the job doesn't pay well enough because they can't survive on that. If you listen to survivors or current sex sellers, so, so many of them talk about they work their ass off at job after job, juggling multiple jobs. These are not lazy women. I really hate the argument that prostitution is lazy. Prostitution is some of the physically and emotionally hardest, I'd say, survival strategies in existence. But aside from that, most of these women worked really, really hard in other jobs, sometimes multiple at the same time, before they surrendered to this industry because it seemed the better option at the time. If women really feel prostitution is the only option, if they can keep some semblance of a day job, absolutely do that because one of the things that is going to make it very hard for you to get up and leave is the gap in your resume that you're going to get if the sex trade is your sole income. Even in countries where it's legal, you're not actually going to be able to put down in your resume that you worked this many years at an escort agency or a brothel or were standing on the street. That, that doesn't happen. Unless you're applying for a different sector in the sex trade, like a porn studio or BDSM studio, but that's not really exiting. Again, a lot of women are working a normal job and those who aren't can't transfer over any recognized skills from prostitution to this normal job. And I think most people who have a gap in their resume, most of the time for totally no fault of their own, like chronic illness, let's say, you know how difficult it is to explain the gap, especially if that's multiple years. And that's gonna be an extremely common experience, but there's more to it. So the sex trade is also incredibly isolating. Yes, that has to do with stigma, I'm not right, but I'm not just talking about the fact that she can talk about the job you know, at the dinner table with family and friends, usually. I'm talking about how it likes to prey on people who are socially isolated, who are already struggling with something like addiction or issues around migration. I'll talk about that more as well. But we all know that to find a new job connection is pretty important, right? Uh, knowing someone who knows someone who can recommend you somewhere or even let you know about an opportunity. That's not going to be accessible for a lot of people who rely solely on the sex trade. A lot of women living in, in nearly like a parallel society with a parallel economy. Yes, you might need a sex seller, like I said, at your office job or, or in the supermarket, but especially the ones who are economic refugees and migrants live quite separate lives. They go to the pizzeria around the corner from the brothel. They live in the brothel. They're not going to have the kind of network that most people need when they have a change of career. First of all, like the, the communities they come from, the, the lack of education alone is going to make it hard. Like I said, a lot of these are migrant women. Migrant women who may not even speak the local language, who may not have finished high school. In European prostitution, and I'm sure not just here, we even have illiterate women in the sixth grade. You think they just get up and apply to be a secretary somewhere. A lot of these women would struggle to even qualify to, you know, work at a supermarket. Not because they're not intelligent, because they're that underprivileged. Not just the gap in your resume, you straight up don't have the basic education that you need for most jobs, jobs that you could decently survive on, and, you know, support the kids or, or the family or, that you probably have. With the situation of migrants, you also need to understand that a lot of them do not have a work permit in the country they're in. They may be undocumented, they may be on just a visiting visa. Now, actually incredibly, in some countries it is legal to sell sex as someone without a work permit. It's the one job that you're allowed to do without a work permit, which really pushes a lot of people who are in the process of getting their documentation, of getting their asylum, 
into the sex trade because it's the only legal option given to them. And yet again in other countries, she might be committing a crime by selling sex without a work permit. And so getting out of the sex trade is really hard when there literally are no other working options for you because you don't have the documentation necessary for that. Or if you start applying for it and someone searches your history, it turns out that actually you committed a crime. And I'm not talking about countries with prohibition, I'm talking about countries like Austria or like New Zealand, where as a migrant, you're not a legal sex seller. What else? Prostitution is, is likely going to fuck up your ability to do finances if you were ever able to or quite possibly you came from backgrounds so poor that the, the rush that comes with suddenly having a lot of money that's how prostitution works sometimes you make a lot sometimes very little and you have to be very very careful around managing that the system itself is set up to put you in debt all these imaginary fees that brothel owners and escort agency owners and all these people put on you these imaginary debts a lot of women may not have enter the sex state necessarily because of debts, but develop it during, like, your financial situation and your ability to handle finances is harmed by the industry. The sex state further makes it hard for you to, to leave through the things that it does to your psyche. It's not a cliche that a lot of women enter the sex trade due to trauma, sexual trauma specifically, having learned their body doesn't exist for themselves, it exists to be consumed by others. A lot of women report the feeling that this is the only thing I'm good at, giving men an illusion that I'm their fantasy sex doll. No one ever gave me the feeling that I could be something else, that I'm worth something else, that my intelligence, my creativity, or any other skill that I have or could possibly have and discover and cultivate, you know, no one ever encouraged me in that way. And the sex trade, the way that it works and the way that it, again, isolates women, a lot of them say like prostitution becomes your life. It's just like you and the brothel. You're lucky to even live outside the brothel and not have to live inside it. To have a home to go back home to. And to still have friends who are not themselves in the sex trade to talk to. I think there's quite a lot of women who could manage to exit the sex trade or for whom one of the barriers is just not believing in themselves. I'm not saying, you know, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Like I said, there's lots and lots of other things that are going to make it hard. It's probably not just, you know, she needs to change her thinking. But a lot of survivors have said that an important step for them was just the recognition of, oh no, wait, I do have skills, I do have something to offer, I could do something else. I now know other women who've managed it, right? Sex trade survivors who are scientists and artists and teachers and mothers and journalists and a million different things. You just have to see someone with the same background as you who managed to do that, that that change in mentality is important. The same way that a lot of women feel like who've been in domestic violent situations for decades who feel like I can't leave like yes this relationship is slowly killing me but I don't feel like I can make it on my own so it is going to mess up your your psyche your, your self-worth if if you didn't already enter with struggling with a lot of these things just depression and PTSD is going to make it hard to hold down a normal job a lot of women do try they try a different job and the PTSD just screws it up for them because yes you can actually sell sex and have PTSD because there are enough Johns who don't care when they see signs of PTSD. But at an office or even just retail, if you have a panic attack on the job, it's going to make it really hard. The high rates of addiction in the sex trade are also clear in the research. So women aren't just trying to quit prostitution. They're also trying to quit the very understandable common coping mechanisms that arise alongside prostitution or may have sometimes preceded it like a drug addiction or an alcohol addiction. If you listen to survivors' stories of how they exit, trying to get clean from drugs, trying to get off alcohol, and trying not to die in that process is a key aspect. And failing to beat that addiction may result in the return into the sex trade as well. If you show up higher drunk to a regular job, you're probably going to get fired. Now, some brothels and some escort agencies will also fire you if the drug use is very clear and visible. But there's always some sector of the sex trade that will accept you, even if you're basically close to dying and you're just one expected overdose away from death. That's how this industry works. It'll take you when you're at your lowest and still continue to squeeze you dry. The physical health aspects. Like I said, I just mentioned, there are a lot of success stories, a lot of women 
who, you know, do well for themselves. I'm not saying that women don't have the skills, but I am saying the sex trade is so damaging that it may actually make it hard to do much else. So I do know also women who have been just living on benefits for the last years since exiting sex trade and they can't get off those benefits. It was difficult enough to access those and they're not able to get off of those because the PTSD or a physical health issue like the damage, the physical damage from the sex trade can be so severe that you end up with a permanent disability. They're never going to work again. I, I can't, I'm not speaking about individuals, right? Again, I'm not telling people to give up, right? Please don't misconstrue my words, but <sighs> the sex trade can be so destructive that you really physically cannot do another job, a regular job or a full-time job. I hope I illustrated it well enough for people. There's so many reasons. You don't just suddenly get up and get out of the sex trade. It really puts hooks in people, claws in people. If you listen to women and try to get out, same as with domestic violence, they say financial, psychological, lots of reasons. We keep coming back into the sex trade. The moment that money is tight, the moment that you get fired from a job and you're like, I don't know where to go. I'm facing nothing. Just because I left the sex trade doesn't mean I suddenly have loving parents and good friends and a good, you know, understanding of, of, of my rights and how to enforce them in whatever legal social system I'm in. And a repeated return to the sex trade is extremely common. Social workers who help women exit the sex trade say that it's actually quite an expensive endeavor. They rely on, well, they, they need really lots of money. I didn't even, like, I, this video is not about trafficked women who are also escaping pimps, which is not rare, on top of all the other issues. Leaving the sex trade is, just keep imagining, it is like a particularly pernicious domestic violence situation. The level of difficulty of leaving the sex trade is, is very similar to that for most women. So just pointing your finger at them and saying, and you should have made a better decision. You should just get up and leave and don't expect us to help you. Yeah, it's ignorant and it's cruel and it doesn't help anybody. I really recommend, I'm, I'm going to put some down below in the description. Just read some reports about women's stories of trying to exit. I'll, I'll, I'll mention one more, which is what women in Germany report. They go to these designated places that are supposed to advise women in the sixth grade on whatever their problems are. And a lot of these don't have exit services. Why would you? It's a job like any other. Or their exit service is just directing her to a different part of the sex trade, like I mentioned. Oh, you don't want to do prostitution anymore? Well, you can do um, this like sexual support stuff for disabled men or demented men. That's still prostitution by a different name. You can work at a sex hotline. That's still emotionally traumatizing. We'll just teach you how to be a better prostitute, make more glamorous pictures, have a better advertising slogan or text or whatever, better persona, better safety system on how to decrease the risk of rape. But rape is an acceptable occupational hazard in sex workers' work, blah, blah, blah. Or some of these social workers aren't even trained on the issue. They don't understand. Like, prostitution survivor Hush Gamal from Germany said, like, she went to the, one of these designated uh, places and said, I want to leave the sex trade. And they said, We'll just stop going to the brothel. Just stop going. And she was like, I have a raging alcohol addiction. I have nobody, and I mean nobody, outside the sex trade. Inside the sex trade, a bunch of traumatized and dangerous people. I rely on them for shelter. I rely on them for food. And you're just telling me to stop going. Yeah, I just really recommend people actually read these stories. And just as a rule of thumb, generally, if you wouldn't say it to a battered woman, don't say it to a woman who's trying to leave prostitution or has left prostitution. You don't motivate anybody by saying, you really did that to yourself, didn't you? That doesn't help anyone. Just, just stop it. 